Thanks, and uh, good afternoon. It's my pleasure here to make a presentation about, it works? Okay. Presentations about uh, what resource issues in China, and it's about the changes. Just now, uh, ask me what's the main topic about this. It's uh, actually it's about changes in the 40 years. And uh, in the past 40 years, now also the relationship with the United States and others changes a lot. Also, now in China, it's, uh, I think, it's, uh, uh, it's a very big country in terms of economic scales and also, of course, the population of the others. And also, I think, in terms of what sector, now it's, there is a lot of experiences in China in the past 40 years, probably in the United States, happened in the 100 years period. And then that's, it's focused on 40 years. My presentation focused on the what issues in a new era. And uh, it's a quite a fashion word, but I adopt this. Challenges and the policy directions. So that's the component, four part. I will go, gradually go through by one by one. And third part, it's about the introduction. And uh, the, this one, I don't know how many of you have been into China and how many familiar with China. This picture showed actually opposite to the that side is the United States to the Pacific Oceans. And uh, different different from United States, we only have one side that have the ocean and you have both side both sides near the ocean. So this picture shows that the main water source from the ocean we have Pacific Ocean, the monsoon season, and we also have the Indian Ocean, uh, Indian Ocean, another southwest monsoon. The boundary between the southeast and the southwest is here in Yunnan province. So different kind of weather. And also, there is some south from the Arctic Oceans only impact some part of the northwest China. So this is the this is the, this is China. Generally, generally the land area almost the same as the United States, and the populations now it's I think four times four times of that in the United States, and then GDP it's probably half time of that in the United States, and then water resources it's uh, China is ranked sixth in the world sixth in the world. United States probably almost the same uh, nearly. Uh, it's uh, Canada is more than that in more than th that in China. Then this is the topograph. So it's also a little bit same. We have the uh, three tallies: the ones the plain area, then plateau area, and also the high one, uh, Tibetan plateaus here. So. Because of the high evaluations of this pattern, monsoon is very strong. The monsoon is very strong. So, and also because of these high mountains around in this area, this area is very dry because the monsoon cannot pass through the Tibet plateau. So, but you will see in this, in this area, there are strong precipitations in this area. Next one is about precipitations. And uh, you will see, because of the topograph impact, you will see the more precipitations in this area. This is the Yangtze River Basin and the Pearl River Basin. And uh, this one is near the China-Indian border. So very steep mountains. And this area, precipitation is more than 6,000 millimeters. And also, this area also can reach 6,000 millimeters. The maximum, in my mind, that in 24 hours, the precipitation is more than 3,000, impacted by typhoon and also the hurricane, this area. And then, in this part, just now I mentioned that there is some Arctic Ocean flows come from this side. So, you will see also see very clear about this boundary and this boundary. Actually, 
I think it's like water or climate boundary between the, this line. Is this area more water and this area less water? And also this area is humidity and temperate and this area dry area. Then this is the calculated of the runoff depth in the China. You will see that in the southern part, 84%, and in the north part, 16%. And the area almost, I think, almost the same. And the runoff depth is more than 600 millimeters, and this area only 35 millimeters a year. So in this area, there is a lot, there is a lot of areas that without any, uh, without any runoff. And uh, this is the seasonal distribution of the, what, of the precipitation in China, and uh, also different from that in California. You have half wet year and then half dry year. But in China, still you can find that the winter and autumn are winter and autumn are dry, but still with some precipitation. And of course, most precipitation in the summertime. Most and the north probably more than 60 percent, and the south normally about 40 percent in the summertime. So that's the seasonal distribution of the water resource in the country. So that's the background, and uh, mountain area, three three terraces, and the precipitation not evenly distributed in terms of the regional distribution and also in time. Then we see the, what happens in the past 40 years. This one, it's about the population changes. All the time, you will see the total population increase all the time. And, but the real impact is here. This is the birth rate. So, this is, the, this is the beginning of the one-child policy, one-child policy. And, uh, and uh, this is the beginning of the two-child policy. And uh, there is a slightly increase, and then it is said that this is done again. So population is uh, not a, it's, population is an economic issue. It's not related to the, no, it looks like not related to the policy. Whether, so, and also you will see the population increase rate. It is said not much lower than probably in the United States. So that's a big problem for the future social and economic development because less population can do less work than less GDP. So that's a, that's a problem which currently face in China. And also, its impact on the water resources. This one, I'm, I'm sorry that the, the, the figure not showed. This is the urbanization trade. And uh, in, the, in the past 40 years, we have a fast urbanization rate, uh, urbanization rate. Now, each year, almost 1% of the population will move to the city. That's, that's how much? One, uh, 13 million. 13 million, that's one LA, to the, one LA population to the city each year. Then, and it is estimated that to the 2030s, the urbanization rate will be about 80%. So more people to the urban area than more domestic water demand, and also more urban water supply. That's different from the agricultural water use. So that's the urbanization rate. Next one, GDP. So that's the key impact, I think, make China become the second largest economy in the world. You will see increase very fast. That's the, that's the total GDP. And also, in US dollar, and this is the uh, per capita GDP. So you will see now it's about 8,000 US dollars per capita. 
and at the beginning, probably only less than, uh, probably less than 500 at the beginning of the GDP. That's 40 years ago. So you will see, a, I think, it's a big changes in the wealth of the country. And economically, so as a nation as a whole, now China is the second largest economy in the world. So that's then this one. It's about economic structure changes. Uh, why I present this because industrial what use, agricultural what use, and the domestic what use, what it's impacted by the structure. So you will see that that's the agriculture sector in the in the 40 years all the time down. So I think now in the United States probably less than five percent. Now in China it's about 10 percent. It will continue to decrease. In the, in the future. And then the second one, we call the industrial sector. And all the time, you will see mostly stable. So actually, this is a problem for the Chinese economy and for the Chinese government. I, mostly in the developed countries, the, in this sector normally occupied about 30%. Germany is less than 30% for the developed economy, normally less than 30%. But now in China, it's about still about 50% all the time, not changing. So uh, why we export so many products to the United States? Because of the, this sector, the industrial sector. And this one is the ser service sector. So industrial sector related to the industrial what use. And the service sector and the urban population is related to the domestic what use. So this tax is all the time increasing, but there is a, there is a decrease in this, year, this time and this time. This time is just the beginning of the, I think, industrialization in China. And this time, just at the time that the China joined the WTO. So there is, during the WTO then, there is an increase in the industrial sector then the decrease in the service sector a little bit. So for the upgrade grade of the economy, we should increase the, that sector and reduce this one. So that's a value added in the value added by the sectors, and this is the total one, and this is that's the that's and this is the service sector, and this is the industrial one, and this is the agricultural sector. All the both three, uh, all three sectors increase all the time. So this part, the last one is about what resource change how development impact the water resource in China. We see the population increase, we see the uh, population structure change and the industrial structure change and increase. Then this one, it's the, we call it, okay, not the natural runoff, it's the runoff to the sea in the Yellow River in the past 50 years. And now it's almost like all the time it's regulated in this one. So because of the development, Yellow River is here, it's the middle. So the runoff from the rivers to the sea also decreased a lot. This is a, a change of the landscape. Then this one is about Haihe River Basin near Beijing. And also you see that the, this line you will see the also the changes of the runoff into the sea, the surface groundwater. So that's the change of the economic development on the land surface and also impact water resources. So the flows to the sea reduced. Uh, looks like the same as the Santa Ana River, now almost no flow. Also the Los Angeles River in the past, probably in the past 50, uh, 60, or, uh, 60 years. Then we will see the new era. It's a so 
China, now it's at the time from the developing to the developed. This is the S curve. And uh, the character of this one is, is this, at this time is that moderate growth in the economic development. So now China, the official data, official figures is about 6.5% each year, economic data. And uh, in the past, probably about 8% or 9% each year, the annual increase in GDP. And the slow growth in population. And then upgrade in the economic structure. That means change of the economic structure. And then fast rural to urban migration, 1% each year. And the last one will show the significant impact of the natural resource and the water. I only present our water resources. There is also about soil quality, also water quality issues. It's all impacted by the development. So China now is at the, this stage. We start, I think, from here. If it developed, we will be at this, this, this stage. So then the water issues and the challenges in New Year. I put the water resource development use in this section. First one about the water supply. It, this is the different source, the surface water, groundwater, and the other water resources supply. Other water resources, you can think about uh, waste water supply or seawater, or seawater or desalination water supply. You will, you will see the total water supply there is an increase in the 1980s, and then there is a slowdown in the 1990s, and the increase at the beginning of the uh, 21st century. And then, at that point, there is a decrease. So in 2015, I think it's the peak water use time, uh, peak water supply time. And after that, what Total water supply decrease. It's the same, it's same, same as in that in the United States. In 1980s, the U.S. water use reached the top. Then these years, uh, in the recent 30 years, not all the time, I think it's total water use is decreasing a little bit. And uh, this is the agricultural water use. At the beginning, probably at um, about 70% of the total water, uh, uh, sorry, this is the surface water supply, I make a mistake. Surface water supply. And then it's almost quite related to the total water supply. And uh, this is the groundwater supply. And uh, there is an increase, and uh, there is a down, and uh, now it's uh, stable. After, also after 20, uh, 2013, because of the environmental issues, there is a slight decrease in the groundwater supply. And uh, this is other water sources, all the time it's increasing. Uh, this is what you use from the consumption side. You will see this is the same as the water supply because it's a balance. This is the agricultural water use. Actual water use you will see that there is a slight decrease. And now it's about two-thirds of the total water use. So you will see that with the in increase of the agriculture output, uh, the water use in the agriculture sector, it's, all, it's stable, quite stable. And uh, this one is the industrial water, uh, water use. From the 1980s, during the industrialization process, all the time increase. And then also, you will see that this point increase and then down, and this point also down. These are two critical points. One is that 2008 financial crisis last time, then there is an insensitive policy from the Chinese government. So 
that is, you, will see in, you can see the increase in the, in the industrial water use. And then, at this point, after 2013, because of the new era and because of the pay attention to the upgrade of the industrial structure, and also because of the pollution control, especially air pollution control, for example, uh, just this time, it's the, also the heating season starts near Beijing. There is a lot of control of the industrial factories. So this impact what use. That's the industrial sector. And uh, this is the domestic sector all the time increase, impacted by the urbanization process and also impacted by the uh, uh, service sector development. But you will see that total water use reaches the top here. Then the water quality, you will see that in the Yangtze River, you will see the improved a little bit. This is the grade one to third, it's the better water quality. And the red one is the worse. You will see that gradually improving in the recent time. The worst in it's in the at the beginning of this century. And Yangtze is a little bit better than you see the yellow. You will see that that's, that's blue and more, more red. And also, at the beginning of this century, it's quite bad. Now, it's a little bit improving, now it's bad again. Then Haihe River Basin, it's near Beijing. So you will see this area is <coughs> Very, very little, and then there is a heavy, I think, bloated this area. So that I will provide some indicators for this. This this is what use per capita, capital, per capita. It's based on the population. You will see it's normally stable. So that means with Without fast increasing of the population, the t total water use will be stable. So that's the impact from the uh, that's the impact from the population. So in the past thirty years, it's quite stable. That's all sectors. That's all sector. Total water use. Oh, total. total water use. It's about four hundred and forty per person each year. It's quite stable. This is what use per one uh, ten thousand U.S. dollars GDP. So that's uh, all the time increase, and very very fast. And because the total water use not increase, the economic still development. So you will see the decrease of this. And this is the irrigation quarter. Each uh, so also decrease all the time. Now it's about uh, 5,000, 5,000, a little bit more, 5,500 cubic meters per hectare. This is it. Then what productivities? It's all the time in increase, so now it's quite high. At the beginning, it's only about $1, and then now increase about $13. For the United States, probably about probably about fifty or fifty dollars. What is the difference between uh, the graph is G, the, uh, water per GDP and this one? So how do you measure productivity? The actually, it's a, an, a, another. It's that uh, peer peer uh, cubic meter contribution to the GDP. Then. What issues? So first one, the water shortage. We have quantity shortage in the dry area, and the quality induced water shortage in the southeast part of China or the, in the southern China because of the water pollution. That means not what cannot be supplied uh, for use, and and also another one is the reliability induced shortage. For example, normally the reliability is for <coughs> for the domestic use. It's normally 95% reliability. 
but can, for example, can only reach 80%, so the reliability induces a shortage. For Beijing, the reliability now is almost 90-90%, so almost 100%, but cannot reach 100%. So we have uh, what shortage problems in, the, in this three forms. Then that's the impact. That first is about 7 to 20 million hectares each year, about 50%, 15% of the arable land that affect by the drought every year. And uh, this will impact ag uh, grain yield and also impact, actually impact the, the food price. Second one is that more than 400 cities of national, 665 city, city, uh, cities definition in China is different from that in the United States. So we totally we have about 665 cities, but 400 su suffered from what shortage, and uh, <coughs> 110 cities suffered. The annual what shortage more than uh, 50 billion cubic meters a year, and then about 20 million rural population in West China as without safe drinking water supply in two terms. Uh, sorry, without two terms, one that what quantity issues, one that what quality issues, not quality, not meet the drinking water supply standard. This is the impact of the water shortage. This is a very beautiful picture. Actually, it's a lake bed. In the autumn time, it's Boyang Lake, second largest lake in China. Because of water shortage, in the winter time, it will grow grasses not covered by water and in this area. <coughs> and this picture, this picture shows, shows the Yunnan provinces. Each year there is a severe water shortage and the water shortage depends on the arrival of the monsoon. If arrival earlier, that's fine. If arrive a little bit later, that will be a problem. And also this area, the, the mountains are very high, and uh, also the people lived in the, in the hill, um, I mean the mountain region. So the cost is very high to provide water supply in, in, in this area. And then second one, flood uh, disasters, small and medium-sized river. The big river, not, I think it's fine for the young river, for the yellow river with the infrastructures. I personally, I do not think there will be a flood disasters in this area. But from small and medium-sized rivers, because of numbers, it's difficult to control. And the urban regions. Uh, also, there, there is a worry about extreme flood in the larger ba river basin, extreme that more than one in 100 years. See the pictures. I'm sorry that originally it's a different one. <coughs> it uh, should be see clear about one. See the picture shows the landslide in 2015, and uh, it's in the loser plateau in this area. And uh, the precipitation is not so, I think, hydrologically, it's not so high. S about, seven, about 70 millimeters an hour then cause the landslide then into the city. So that's in 2010. In the, so this is the start of the Chinese government to deal with the flood issues in the small and the middle-sized rivers. So this one. And uh, this one, I think, is a very sad picture for the 2012. July 21st, at that day I, I was in Beijing and uh, running whole day. There is one person died in this area because of the car rush into the water. Uh, it's an SUV. The driver probably think he can go slow, but actually it's the water, it's, uh, it's back from the river to the road. So that means at that time the drainage system is not good in the urban. So this, I think in Beijing will not happen. 
again, but in, in other cities or big cities every year on the internet will be the city to see the sea. That means uh, covered by the flooding water every year because we have more than 600 cities. That means every year there will be several cities will look like this, uh, this urban. And in the urban area, the damage is much more than in the rural area. And this is my hometown. And in 2013, because impacted by typhoon, and uh, actually the whole town is merged, it's, it's under the water. And what pollution? Surface water, groundwater, and the urban and the rural. 50% of the lake with the different degrees of eutrophication. That means too many, too many nutrition in the water body. And more than 90% of open water body floated. And this picture shows that it's the discharge of the wastewater in the groundwater. And this picture, it's a lake. Actually, I have been I have been there in uh, ten years ago. Ask them to uh, provide the policy direction to deal with this. Now, algae bloom uh, almost covers the whole China. Originally, only in the uh, only in the tropical subtropical regions because of the temperature. Now, in the northeast part part of China, also they have algae break in the summertime. And uh, this is the ground, actually it's the ground water. It's a well. The industrial discharge the ground uh, wastewater in the well. So that's a, uh, I think that's a, this is a criminal issue investigated two years ago. Then all ecological degradation is what flows issues in the northwest China. So we have no water flows in northwest China and the water quality in the east China. So this is the Yellow River, dry in the 1990s in this area. And this is the Siang River. Originally, uh, there is an oasis region in this area. This is the end lake of the river. Now it's dried for more than, more than 40 years. So now the challenges, now China is at, it's at the transition period from the water quantity to quality and the quantity then the, to the e ecosystem. It's gradually once. And then from the engineering construction to pollution control and the ecological restoration, different stages. And from the traditional flood and drought problems to the modern, we have modern emerging problems, such as the pollution and the management. And from supply man de management to demand management, we should manage demand. And from the what resource development to the conservation and the protection. So this time, actually, it's a, it's a transition period and also at a turning point a turning point, you will see that all the policies really that turning about from the quanti quantity to quality and from the development to the conservation. So the focus of the policy changed. Then the last part, policy direction. First, what saving was the first priorities? So that's in the national agenda, national strategy on the what saving promote what saving in every aspect of the society and the process in production and the consumption. Then agriculture what saving to develop modern agriculture. Industrial what saving to promote structure upgrade. That means what inten intensity industrials will be canceled. Urban water saving to increase water use efficiency and uh, promote non-traditional water use. Include the recycled water, rainwater harvest. In Beijing, there are uh, quite big rainwater harvest. <coughs> and desalinate the water in some uh, coastal area. Then, demand management. 
So the harder the strength of what resource, what environment, and what ecological holding capacity. More focus on that is that urban development, industrial development, and the population size should be decided by the water resource availability. So that's my main concern on California. How you can limit your population. Uh, you cannot use some uh, government orders to do something. And uh, so in China, now for the some mega cities like Beijing, it's there. There is a control of the populations in the central area that develop some satellite town, satellite cities along the Beijing because of the water resource availability. Then we also introduced the market instrument, set the policy aspect, and the water right system development. And we defined uh, what resource for each province, for each, each province, and also for each, down to the each county. That's the total volume that you can, the region can use. We have the water pricing systems introduce the water resource fee and the water resource tax. In the United States, you do not have water resource fee or water resource fee. And now it's reformed to the tax. We also want to have a full recovery, a full cost recovery of the water, water service. Uh, based on the California's, I think, lessons, it's, it will be very expensive. And we have the comprehensive agricultural water pricing because of the characters of the agricultural water sector, agricultural sector. So in some way, it needs to subsidize. In some way, we should promote water use efficiency. So that means we have comprehensive agricultural water pricing. That means in the quart under the quarter, it's in cheap price or free. But if we are use more than quarter, will be have a punished price. Then infrastructure linkages to increase the water supply. For, for example, for the south to north water diversion project, increase the water supply to North China plant. And to some cities to increase the reliability because the several water, water sources are connected together. That means you can regulate water in the whole network that could increase the reliability and also reduce the risk. The last one is about key strategic focus in the recent, in the recent five years. First one is that the stressed water resource management strategy uh, developed in 2008 and uh, implemented after 2012. Now it's, it's all the way down to this. That means the three red lines. One red line is about total water, total water use. The, Another red line is about water use efficiency. And the third one is about proton discharge, the water resource management strategy. And then the second one, the liver lack chief system. That means the leader of the government would be as the lack a liver chief or the lake chief. It covers all the livers in China. So it's more administrative, uh, more administrative systems that, in, that means we will increase the importance of what issue. The third one is about non key water resource development project in 100, 172 key projects all over the country. That's the, that's the in, uh, infrastructure development. Uh, totally will increase about three, uh, 30, billion cubic water supply a year. OK, that's the contents of my presentation. Thanks. Thank you.
something with groundwater and therefore maybe the overall volume of water is decreased over time, but that's not being measured very well? So, uh, sorry. This this one, and uh, this actually this picture shows. It, I have an estimate about California. California almost double times about about 1,000 uh, one uh, cubic meter per person in California. So uh, a time more than that in China. Uh, it's, it's just because that this figure I want to show that, I want to show that the total water use clearly related to the population. And uh, Whatever in the agricultural time or in the industrial time or probably in the future, in the developed time, it's uh, quite stable. And uh, the total water use comes from agricultural, industrial, and the domestic. With the economic development, agricultural water use will decrease per person. Then industrial water use will increase and decrease. And the domestic water use increase. So uh, also I have another study show that actually China that now has decoupling water resource use to the economic development. And also in the United States, I just now mentioned in 1980s, uh, water use decoup decoupled from the economic development. And this is also same in China. If population not increase, then the total water use will not increase. So I think this is a rule. If you can go to the slide that shows the different sectors over time. The different sector, what use? No, no, the one that has the bar. So the, the question is the following. Agriculture in the beginning of the period had about 40%. Uh, almost 70%. At the beginning, about more than 70%. No, 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 this picture. It's a different uh, slide that has the bar. Oh, different side had the bar. Uh, this is the, sorry, this is the. Yeah, this one. This uh, so structure, yeah. Change. So, my question is what happened with food production? in China with that dramatic decline in the role of agriculture? Uh, this is the value, not, not in the irrigated land. And uh, actually, the total irrigated land in the past 40 years not increased too much. At the beginning, I think it's uh, how much is it? At, at this time, is 50 million hectares, the whole China. And then at now, it's about 60 million hectares. So the irrigated land increased about 20%. But the value increased a lot. And the value in the total economy decreased also very much. Relatively to other sectors. Then, yeah, to that. And, uh, the green production issues is uh, actually now we import a lot of uh, green from the other countries. And uh, the green production not increased too much in this time. This is in the value, not in the, not in the absolute uh, out yield of the green. Sorry, I, I miss your point. Yeah. I do not think so. This it's all 
it's from the Ministry of Water Resources, not deal with uh, not deal with the urban water sector. Urban water urban water recycle is uh, is managed by the Ministry of Housing and the Rural and the Urban Development. So, so wastewater recycling not as the project is not as as big as this one. I did not mention these issues, and uh, before I come to the come to UC, I probably I think more more optimistic about the California's water policy, but no, no, I do not think so. Actually, I, in the morning I did not ask uh, uh, questions about the fire, wildfire, because last year also have a, a strong uh, wildfire, and. Uh, when I first come to here, I asked the uh, firefighters in Kelowna. When I was, uh, the, when I was in the hotel, actually they stay in the hotel, and I asked them, is is it impacted by climate change or not? But they told me uh, they told me that it's not. I think probably it's the routine work for them at that time, and we should prepare for the fire. But for the public feeling, probably it's it's different. Now for the water issues, and uh, good news, the professors told me that in the last 20 years, in the last 20 years, no water use increased in the California. That's the good news. The bad news is that in the future, the population will, inc will increase how much? I don't know. And it will increase. And uh, this increase actually it supports the economic development of the state. Uh, but uh, from the Santa Ana River and from the Los Angeles River, it's the same as that river in China. No flow, only bad, no flow. And but someone, uh, Kurt told me there is an underground flow in the Santa Ana River. And also, I was told that the water recycled two times or three times from the Santa Bino then. Recycle the down to the groundwater, pump again, then recycle the down to the groundwater, then oven, develop again, then recycle the to the river, and then salt, another line to the sea. So this, I think, is a, it's a critical condition. Now, still, California is at the stage of the water quantity, quality. It's managed by the Clean Water Act, but ecological issues not not in the policy. For example, uh, I don't know whether Santa Ana River has fish originally. I think so, because it's a river. Definitely will have fish, and it's the same as the LA River. It should have fish in the river, and the water can flow all the time. That's a river. So that, I think, is a long way. And of course, also in my mind, probably for the California, the final solution is the sea. So uh, my, now my feeling is that United States is very, very, very techno technology decided. Whenever I have a problem, anyway, I will can develop a new technology to solve this problem. Then problem, technology, problem, technology, all the time. So now it's the same for the water issues in California. So that's one way. And uh, as, uh, as just, uh, I, I think uh, the water issues in California, it's, I think it's a big problem. You see the. Uh, lawn, they need to irrigate every night. And uh, very, actually, each household is a small farm. 
and uh, grow the grassland, uh, grow the, grow the grass all the year. In the natural conditions, in the dry season, there is uh, no grasses because of dry season, no precipitation. But in your yard, whenever I wake up, you'll see the lawn. So this is a small farm. And uh, all the valley in this area, it's so if there is still increase, you will see recently there is new development in the housing along this area. So if there is no control of the population, I think there will be no end for the, end for the water issues in California. Of course, it's a very good business for very good business, very good business. So that's that's my policy suggestions. You should should control the development. Uh, politician would not like to listen to this. <laughs> Uh, I So that's that's a, that's an issue. I uh, not listen. I <coughs> I have a research project in Shenzhen, and uh, about uh, 15 years ago, 15 years, in 2004. Uh, at that time, uh, because of the severe water pollution, and then the city invited the institute from the central government to help them to provide a solution. And uh, we suggest them to increase the increase the sewage collection rate by developing a separate system. And this is also a law required uh, le required to build the separate system. But at the beginning of the urban development, because of the limited funding for development, at that time. At that time, probably you will see the beautiful building, but the pipeline underground is very expensive also. So uh, some cities, or most cities, not developed the separate the rainwater and the sewer systems. And uh, now the problem more and more, 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 uh, more serious. So now the new policy required to develop a separate system. So if it is new, that will be fine. But if it developed 20 years ago, that mostly systems, they are combined systems. And so that will increase the capacity, increase the treatment capacity of the wastewater treatment, and also will reduce the efficiency of the wastewater treatment. So actually, we are paying for the cost. 